Yo, what's up guys, stay safe here. Welcome back to Classic WoW Weekly. Classic WoW is getting very, very close to full release. So as you all may have noticed, the Classic WoW beta is over and a lot has been taken care of. In a recent blue post from Blizzard, they said, thank you very much to everyone who's helped test the Classic closed beta over the last several weeks. We have reviewed over 17,000 bug reports from testers. These led to our verification of hundreds of new and unique bugs. Your efforts have directly contributed to making Classic WoW a better experience for everyone when it opens to the world on August 27th. Internally, we're working through the aforementioned bug fixes, testing the high-level zones such as Eastern Plaguelands and doing our raid testing. We'll make sure Ragnaros and Anixia are ready to go. Now on top of the beta, they've also done several stress tests during which they've tested variables with login server functionality, layers per server, players per layer, and much, much more. Still, we have one stress test to go before full release in just 26 days. As for the next and final stress test, I imagine it will be level 1 to 20 because the first test was 1 to 5, the second test was 1 to 10, and the third test was 1 to 15. If I had to guess, it will probably be 2 or 3 days long giving people time to level, though I think Blizzard's primary goal with these tests is not gathering bug reports from players as much as, as it is testing server stability. Um, in fact, I don't think players even had a bug report button or functionality during the last stress test. But that being said, I really hope they don't cancel the test or delay it too much longer because I think that server stability is a really important thing for them to hammer down before full release, uh, very obviously. Speaking of which, uh, they haven't really even addressed many of those concerns in a blue post, concerns addressing server stability or, you know, login queues or functionality or anything like that. So I hope you hear more info about that very soon. I personally reported a ton of bugs in the beta, some of which got taken care of, some of which unfortunately did not by the time the beta ended, but I expect that all of these loose ends will be taken care of before full release. For a lot of people, I know that Classic WoW will be their first experience with Vanilla WoW or this version of the game, and I know first impressions are very, very, very important. So I hope that things like small annoying bugs and general playability are sorted out before the servers go live at late August. I just got back from casting the Race to World First Mythic Ajar race for Red Bull in London, and it got me thinking. Though all of Classic WoW's raid bosses have been killed previously in the past, some guild will be the first to kill both Ragnaros and Anixia in Classic WoW, which will be slightly different than both Vanilla WoW and private servers. So to discuss that, I'm bringing on some players from several top Classic WoW guilds um, to discuss the Race to World First Ragnaros and Anixia in Classic WoW, and while I'm sure that they won't be willing to go over all of their strategies and secrets, we'll talk about how things will play out, some general advice, some predictions regarding which guild will be number one, and how long it will take them. I think that all of the Vanilla WoW knowledge and practice that people have accumulated over the last 15 years or so actually serves to make the Classic WoW Race to World First very interesting because it boils down so much to preparation and execution. I guarantee that we're going to see several emergent gameplay strategies that we haven't seen in the past, and I think that's what makes it very, very exciting. As you can see here, it took players around 6 months to kill Ragnaros after Vanilla WoW was released. Obviously that was 14 years ago, a lot has changed and we have much much more information and practice than the Guild Ascent did in 2005, but nonetheless, there will be a race to Ragnaros and Anixia in Classic WoW. If I had to guess when Ragnaros will die in Classic WoW, I'd say probably 8 days after release. Anything faster than that seems pretty insane to me, but hey, if someone does it, big props to them. But I think killing him below 8 days, that's crazy, crazy, crazy fast. Like I mentioned earlier, I just got back literally last night from casting the World First Race uh, for Pieces and Limited Red Bull over in London. So I just got back and being there, I had the opportunity to talk to several um, like top BFA raiders in Limit and Pieces. And what one of them told me regarding uh, raiding seriously or raiding hardcore and classic WoW was that they didn't feel that stimulated to do it because they felt like that riddle had already been solved, so to speak, with a lot of the classic or all of the classic WoW bosses because people have done it before. So I totally understand what he means when he says that because with each new BFA boss or, or each new BFA raid or new raid in retail WoW, these guys are literally at the forefront of coming up with strategies and methodologies to kill these new bosses. But with classic WoW competitive raiding, I think there is still a riddle. I think it's just a bit of a different riddle. In my opinion, that riddle has become how fast can we clear this raid and kill these bosses rather than can we kill these bosses at all? What consumes, what positioning, what raid comp, what specs, almost mythic plus style raiding in a way. Now, speaking of World First events, Blizzard has streamlined their esports licensing protocol, making it easier to host esports events in several of their games, including World of Warcraft. 
Now, I would heavily speculate that they've done this because of the huge success that Classic WoW Duel Tournaments have had on the demo and the beta, all of which surpassed other major WoW events, uh, esports events, in terms of Twitch viewership. As far as Classic WoW goes, Duel Tournaments, I think, are just probably the tip of the iceberg. I can personally imagine more Duel Tournaments, Twink events, pre-made BG events, speed leveling events, raid speed run events, things like that. The list goes on and on. And I know I, I would personally like to, like to see all these things manifest in Classic WoW. But this also raises the question of Classic WoW tournament realms for events like this that are secondary and not connected to the real realms in any way and that are only available sporadically for a limited amount of time. I personally would not be opposed to this, but I think it has to be done in the right way, sort of just how I, out, how I outlined it. But um, I'm very curious to, uh, as to what you guys think about tournament realms for Classic WoW, um, so let me know in the comments section down below. Blizzard has also released quite a comprehensive list of things that are not bugs in Classic WoW based off of incorrect bug reports that they received during the Classic WoW beta. So I'm not going to read all of these, but it's really interesting to see that so many things are different than what people had come to accept um, on private servers or what they had thought were normal based off of 13, 14, or 15 year old gameplay or their memories of vanilla WoW. The big ones probably being player hitbox sizes, melee leeway, spell batching windows, and uh, slash sit spamming to uh, bait crit reactive procs. Those are probably the biggest ones I can think of. I also personally experienced lots of BFA players, Battle for Azeroth players coming into the beta and asking me, for example, to battle res them with my soul stone as a warlock. So, you know, obviously that's something you can do in BFA, but you cannot do <laughs> in uh, Classic WoW. So I guess my takeaway is that for most people playing Classic WoW, I think it will genuinely be a, a new gameplay experience for them because either they haven't played vanilla before or because they forgot so many of the 15-year-old nuances. A big concern of all MMO gamers, gold selling is something that has plagued WoW since day one. In a recent interview with Eurogamer, lead software engineer Brian Birmingham said the developer hopes that he will be able to keep the practice of gold farming, buying and selling in-game currency via a third-party black market, quote, under control. When asked if Blizzard is expecting more issues around gold farming, Birmingham said that as long as, hu as a human is at the keyboard and they're actually running around and doing things, there shouldn't really be a problem. Instead, the issue arises when someone has got some kind of automation program doing the gameplay for them. Birmingham points out that the practice is against the game's terms of service, but it should also be far e easier to crack down on that behavior now than when WoW launched back in 2004. Quote, we have better detection algorithms and techniques today than we had before, so we hope that it will be sufficient to keep gold farming under control. Currently, World of Warcraft allows players to buy gold via the token system, but Birmingham confirms that this won't be available in WoW Classic. He does note, however, that players have pointed out that since it's a shared subscription, if you want to farm a bunch of gold in the modern WoW and use that to re-up your Classic WoW subscription, that does get you another month of Classic WoW as well. Now, in my opinion, the addition of WoW tokens into Retail WoW at some point was a big mistake and undermines the integrity of the game in a lot of ways. Regarding stopping real money trading, I'd rather have Blizzard try and fail than not try at all and choose to just foster themselves and make a quick buck. So this interview with Brian is very good to hear. In my opinion, one of the best things about WoW is that it's a completely separate and distinct social hierarchy. And I think that this is what initially attracted a lot of players to it in the first place. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor or attractive or ugly in real life. All that matters is your gameplay. But the second real money trading, either with WoW tokens or third-party gold selling sites, enters the equation, that hierarchy is really undermined. And because all it takes is a credit card swipe to get ahead, especially in a game like Classic WoW, where having gold has such a lar large impact on your gameplay, and the process of getting gold is such a formative experience. Looking forward, we have one more stress test that was originally planned for late July, which has been pushed back to some point in August, presumably, as the date hasn't been released quite yet. Classic WoW comes out in 26 days as of making this video, so for a lot of people, I think that this is the point that things sort of become real. You know, you're taking time off work, you're planning one last big gameplay session before school starts, whatever it might be. Personally, I have a lot of content to make before Classic WoW comes out. I will also be streaming on Twitch talking about Classic WoW and preparing for Classic WoW every day until then. Once we can play, I'm going to be leading a semi-hardcore raiding guild, we're going to be pushing for a 12-day Ragnaros kill, so there's a lot to take care of. I have to prepare all of that stuff, but most importantly, you guys will be able to play Classic WoW, and the wait will finally be over. So let me know what you guys are planning on taking care of in Classic WoW, what your first set of goals are. Make sure to subscribe here on YouTube and find me on Twitch. Thanks for watching, guys, and as always, stay safe.